In the previous sections, we were talking about polynomial functions and how we go about finding their intercepts, how we find their zeros, and now we want to look more at their graphs, and really just looking at their graphs in a more general sense. And then we're going to see how the factorizations and the zeros lead to more concrete information about what the graph looks like. So the thing about polynomial functions, if we're going to be really you know, precise about it, it's something that looks like this. Now I know that looks really messy, but this is just some of the notation that you see as you go on in your math classes. So if you have a polynomial function that is written in descending order, it's going to be in this form. Okay, and again, I know it looks really messy, but we can't just stick with doing A, B, C, and so on for the coefficients because we don't know how many terms they're going to be. So that's why we use the little subscripts here to denote that this is going to be the, the nth, um, or this is going to be the coefficient for the term with degree n. Okay, so this is a polynomial function. So this is a polynomial function of degree n, okay? And the assumptions that we're making here, what we have to have for this to be a, a true polynomial function, is that all these coefficients are going to be real numbers this lead coefficient is not going to be zero, otherwise this guy would then be the, the lead coefficient. Okay, so that's why we talk about it being a polynomial function of degree n. Alright, so that's just like the big nasty looking way if you were to expand everything out. We've seen some polynomial functions that look like that. But most of these guys that we're going to be seeing right now can be written like this in a form that we were used to seeing when we were graphing nonlinear functions. So something like a times x minus h to the n plus k. So when we were doing quadratic functions before, you know, the n would have been a square, and so we knew what shape it was, and we knew how the h and the k would shift things up, down, left, and right. Well, it's still going to be the same no matter what that power is going to be. The h tells you how you move to the left or to the right, k tells you how you move up or down, and the a can determine kind of the orientation of things. But before we just kind of jump into that, I want you to see what the different powers are going to look like um, whenever we are uh, looking at the graphs. Okay, so let me just swap over to that real quick. So here, things that have an even power, so x squared, looks like a parabola, right? I don't think there's any surprise at that. But what you'll see is that when I graph things like x raised to the fourth power, it has a very similar shape. And if I were to do x to the sixth, these guys are all kind of u-shaped in nature, but you see that here the red for x squared, then x to the fourth and x to the sixth. So the higher the power is, the steeper these guys get on the end. So we go from something that's a U-shape, ish, and it gets flatter and flatter in the middle, but steeper on the ends like that. Now, let's change these guys and see what it looks like when we have things that have an even power. So things like X and X to the third and X to the fifth. You see that from left to right, what these guys are doing is they're going all the way down on the left, all the way up on the right. And the higher the power is, the flatter that they are right here in the middle. In fact, if we zoom in, when we zoom in going from here's negative one to positive one, there's really not too much deviation with the graphs here. But you'll see that the smaller the power is, the higher it is. So here's x to the first, below that is x to the third, and below that is x to the fifth. But once I go beyond a value where x equals one, here's x to the first, x to the third, x to the fifth. So between negative one and one, um, 
the higher the power, the closer it is to zero, but beyond that, it just blows up, which kind of makes sense. We would expect x to the fifth to be much bigger than x to the first as you go out to the right. So those are some of the basic shapes that we see with that. Uh, let's talk about the in behavior because that in behavior coupled with this form will tell us a lot about the, the basic shape and the location of these polynomial functions. It's not going to be very often that we're going to be seeing it all spread out like this like we had in the last few sections. In the last few sections I gave you information about it. I, I told you here were some zeros or here were some factors and you were able to find everything else. So one of the key things that we want to talk about is what end behavior is going to be for these polynomial uh, functions. Okay, so just make a little chart right here. And we're going to look at this where we have where this a right here, if it's positive versus where that a value is negative. And then on the side, what if n is even versus what things look like when n, your degree, is an odd number. Okay, so pretty, pretty simply, we compare these guys to what we know. So when n is even, I want you to be thinking about your even degree function. Your main one is the quadratic function, so we know that his shape, when you have a positive lead coefficient, he goes up on the right, and he goes up on the left. But what we're really saying is this. We're saying that as x tends towards negative infinity, he's going up. And over here, it's as x tends toward positive infinity, it's also going up. So if I were to ask you for the end behavior, you know that you're going up on both ends. If the lead coefficient is negative, less than zero, you know that in the past, we would take our parabolas and we turn them upside down. And by turning it upside down, we see that our end behavior is now going to be going down on the left and down on the right. So no matter what's going on in the middle, no matter how high of a power it is, as long as it's even, if the lead coefficient is positive, it's going to be going up on both ends. If the lead coefficient is negative, it's going to be going down on both ends. Now, it could have a lot of weird things going on, little humps and bumps and stuff in the middle. But what we're saying is that as x gets really, really big, either towards negative infinity or positive infinity, the end behavior, that lead term, is going to have to take over. And if n is odd, this is when we think about, say, x to the third. And x to the third goes up on the right, and it goes down on the left. It, it does the, the cactus thing that we've talked about. If you put a negative in front of that, it turns the cactus upside down. So if the lead coefficient is negative, and you have an odd power, you'll be going up as you go to the left, and you'll be going down as you go to the right. So these are just the, the in behaviors that we have for these functions. And what we want to do next, in the next video, I'm going to give you some examples. We're going to draw quick little sketches of them so that we can answer questions about domain and range and whether the function is increasing or decreasing.